here. Ah! Uh, <laughs> apparently, the second cop was only there to investigate the state of the deer. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And as soon as he got out of his car and walked over to the deer, all I could think was, he's dead. Trust me, he is dead. We were there. We know. <laughs> well, it was that, and I kept peeking over with the flashlight to make sure that he wasn't moving. I'm like, if you move, I swear to God, I'll chase you down and beat you with this mag light. <laughs> <laughs> they have many, many uses. <laughs> yes. One of them is being run over by an 18-wheeler. One of them is, is Ash the Deer's head in, so he won't move again. But that's what you get for killing my Buick, damn it. Yes. I was mad. I really was. <laughs> Maybe it would have been better for your state of health for the deer to actually move. <laughs> if I had been driving a Volvo, that deer would have exploded. <laughs> that car, The car would have been fine. Nothing would have been wrong with the car if I'd only been driving a Volvo. Uh-huh. Yeah. But... Anyway, so yeah, the second cop pulls up. He's got his lights going. About midway through all of this, it hits me. This looks like a drug bust. It looked like a drug bust. Yeah, I could see that. Because, you know, there's this car on the side of the road, and the deer is on the other side of the road. So, you know, as you're driving by, you can't see the deer, and or you don't connect the two together. All you see is a car... Two people sitting on the side of the road, two cops behind them, one with their lights going. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I just knew at some point someone I knew was going to drive by, and I would <laughs> never hear the end of it. Yeah, I bet have got drugs. Yeah, you know, you're getting all arrested on the side of the road. It looked really classy. Yeah, so then I... Uh, I, I made the mistake of pointing this out to the cop, which it's a good thing he has a sense of humor, because otherwise I probably would have had, like, three more officers up there trying to run a canine unit. Yeah. Um... But then the, the the first cop that showed up asked us, um, he, he looked at me, he said, um, so are you going to take the deer with you? And I said, um, no. He's like, okay, well, not to sound redneck or anything, but I am. I'm like, you can have it. (laughs) (laughs) And as soon as I said that and he handed me my license and registration back, he backed his cop car up and jumped the deer into his trunk. Ooh. Venison a la Buick. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah. I was hard for that roadkill, man. God. He could at Excuse least pay Joe. Close the door, it's cold! <laughs> no, good night! Good night! Okay, you uh... are. <laughs> it's cold! Is it? Well, normally, normally, you know, if someone would stay there looking at me, I would just wait until you started talking and then I'd, I'd close the mic, I'll say good night, all this. It was cold! <laughs> Yeah, we're at like 30 degrees centigrade today, which is like a crap load more than what you've got. I'm sitting here with a fan on, just about sweltering my butt off. And it's not even summer yet. I'm sitting here with a little heat, with a little space heater going locked into a little room, and my husband opens the door to tell me goodnight and just stands there and stares at me. <laughs> Letting all that cold air in and... No. So this would be really fun when we're when we're both sitting together uh, today. Yeah. Earlier, just a few minutes ago, when it happened, and uh, it'd be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole yeah. time. So he ended up backing his cop car up, putting the deer in there, and then like another mouth thing, other than you know the whole drug bust joke, is he gets out to take pictures of it. And I said on in front of the cop that is not the good that is not the best way to end a nine hour drive. I'm like, why don't you just come out and tell him that you're drunk too? <laughs> yeah, you know. You know that, that pot that I smoked, I thought it was out of my system by now, but and you know, the baby she was drinking off her whiskey we ate earlier. <laughs> 
Yeah, just give him the whole rundown so he can just go, well, car's full of venison. Can't fit you in, love. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just, and like, as we go, or, you know, as we're going home and, you know, even days going to pass, I can't be angry anymore because it's just so funny when you sit back and really think about it. I mean, it's, it's awful, but, you know, we were all fine. The car actually is fine. Most of the damage is cosmetic. Or, or fixable. But the only thing wrong with the car is, yeah, er, er, the only thing wrong with the car is um, part of the grill was lodged into the condenser, which I don't know what any of that means, but apparently it's not that big of a deal. Well, there you go. I mean, it probably <laughs> might cost a bit to fix it, but it doesn't sound like it's anything massively, like, going to write the car off or anything. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I think the the only thing that makes it not drivable right now is I don't have blinkers. Well, you know, they they shouldn't cost too much, should they? I don't think so. But um, so yes, that was uh, that was my week. So uh, yeah, yay! Oh, lovely. <laughs> Okay. I, I don't think I'll be making any more 10-hour drives in, in, in anytime soon. No, I don't suggest it to anyone. At least stop, revive, and survive every two hours or so. So that's yeah. my tip for the week. And don't hit deer. Especially not going at like 62. Yeah, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we get into our stories? Yes. Alrighty, you take the first one because you put that one up. Okay. I might have to stop and cough. I'm just going to warn you. That's okay. It's cold. Yes. But, uh, well, that and I think I got some kind of, um, like, sickness from uh, going up there. Because I've been coughing insanely since I got back. Probably the dry air. Probably. That you have to go through a mountain. You have to drive through a mountain to get there. Through a mountain or through a mountain pass? Yes. Through a mountain. Wow. Like they cut the road into the mountain. That's crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> You're going, if only I had a Bugatti Veyron. If only I had a Volvo. But anyway. <laughs> The only thing you'd have to be working on is that paint scratched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dang it, it scratched my paint job. Ah, damn you, dear. Okay, anyway. Zoo plans to separate gay penguins. Not a good segue, but... <laughs> there is no segue. I, mean, I, guess you, I, guess, I guess you could, you know... Say something about you know the Volvo is a really good rough rider and no. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy and Pedro, two African ping- penguins at the Toronto Zoo, are inseparable and show signs of same-sex mating behaviors. But the zoo plans to break the pair apart soon, according to a report in the Toronto Star. That's because the two males were intended for a breeding program, which could help strengthen their species in captivity. Buddy and Pedro are said to have quality genes and that would pass on to any offspring they might father. Gay male penguin couples appear to be fairly common. The Central Park Zoo has turned out to be the Castro of the penguin world, <laughs> with several homosexual pairs observed there. Perhaps the most famous couple is Roy and Silo, two male chin-strap penguins who incubated an egg together and raised the hatch chick named Tango. Aww. Aww. A children's book, and Tango Makes Three, chronicles this event uh, from about six years ago. Gay penguins have also been noted at SeaWorld, Orlando, and zoos in Japan and Germany. Homosexuality in general has been docu- documented in at least 1,500 species. So, hmm, which one is more natural, being gay or being anti-gay? Hmm. Mm. As a she-wired story points out, gay or homosexual isn't usually the term used by animal keepers. In zoo speak, it's called they forged the bio, where they were members of a bachelor flock. It's a May-December pairing, too, as Buddy is 20 years old and Pedro is 10. Ooh, Ooh. sugar daddy. It's 
cradle snatcher. Or sugar pig. <laughs> <laughs> Would it technically be a cradle considering they're penguins? You nest snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. According to the Toronto Star Report, the two penguins emit mating calls to each other, which make them sound like braying donkeys. Why was that a necessary point to make? I don't know. They also swim and frolic together, regularly groom each other, and pair off together every night. See, they are gay! 